Hello, this is the K Iser Guy channel, subscribe so you don't miss more interesting stories, and we'll get started. Lucas and Isabella met at a party. Isabella was brought to the party by a friend, Kate. Kate was a friend of Lucas's comrade. Lucas is a tall, handsome, trim officer. She is a slender, beautiful blonde, with blue eyes and long legs. A manager at a grocery company. As soon as they were introduced, Lucas decided that he couldn't let the girl go far away from him. There were too many male gazes, literally eating Isabella with their eyes. After the party, he offered to walk the girl out. Isabella agreed. The girl's send-off lasted all night. They walked around the city, talking sweetly. Each told a little about himself. When they got to the apartment, Lucas asked for Isabella's phone number. Of the remaining 10 days of Lucas's vacation, they met every day. The day of departure arrived. Isabella arrived at Lucas's house, helped him pack and went to see him off. Lucas put his things in the car and went back to Isabella on the platform. There was so much he wanted to say to her, to hold her close and never let her go. The train station echoed. There were five minutes left before the moscow murmansk train departed. Here on the platform, they kissed for the first time. I'll be waiting for you, Lucas, Isabella whispered in Lucas's ear. I'll come to you as soon as I get the chance, Lucas whispered back, pulling Isabella close to him. That evening, Isabella received a text message, I've missed you so much already. Isabella was terribly pleased, and she fell asleep with a smile on her face. They called each other almost every day and counted the days until they met again. It just so happened that Lucas's vacation coincided with a holiday. It was Navy Day. Lucas had to take part in the parade. And right from the parade, Lucas arrived at the train station in his dress uniform. It was good that he had prepared his things in advance and bought the tickets in advance. Isabella stood on the platform and watched the passengers getting off the train. When she saw Lucas, she rushed over to him. As soon as he stepped on the ground, she wrapped her arms around his neck, kissing him with her plump lips. I've been waiting for you, Isabella whispered after the kiss. Let's go to my place, I made dinner for us. Lucas was overwhelmed with emotion. He silently took the girl under his arm and led her to the exit from the station. They had dinner, drank wine, said affectionate words to each other, kissed. The dinner ended in the bedroom. After the mind-blowing sex, Lucas silently got up and began to dress. He was dressed in his military dress uniform and even had his dirk on. Isabella stared at him in bewilderment. It was already late in the evening. Is something wrong or something? Where are you going, Lucas? Honey, wait for me. Lucas asked. He got dressed and left. He came back in the morning. Isabella had been worried sick while he was gone. She tried to call Lucas, but his phone was on the nightstand in the hallway. Entering the apartment, Lucas hugged Isabella and whispered. I love you very much Isabella, marry me. And he took a small, velvet box out of his pocket and opened it. The ring glittered in the light of the lamp, and the diamond sparkled with all the colors of the rainbow. My God, where did you get it, in the middle of the night? Isabella wondered. Don't ask. Answer me, will you marry me? Will you come with me? Lucas asked questioningly. Of course, Lucas. I love you too, don't I? And I'd go anywhere with you. The next day, they went and applied at the registry office. After the wedding, Lucas and Isabella went to the south. They booked a small and cozy room for two and enjoyed themselves in rest. Sitting in chairs in the sunshine, they were happy. I never thought I'd marry a military man. Isabella said. I've often heard that military men are limited people. They don't even have anything to talk about, they're not interested in art, they're not interested in science either, they read the same book all the time. That's just the way it is. Lucas supported his wife. No. You're different, even though you're military. You said yourself that you have about a thousand volumes of various fiction and historical novels. And we went to the theater together. And you told me about Rembrandt. A lot of other things. 
you always have an answer to my questions. I even pick the tricky ones sometimes. Sorry, that was before we were married. And I just wanted to catch you for once when you couldn't answer my question. Isabella smiled. But you were always ready. That's why I'm in the military, to be prepared for any situation. Smiling back, Lucas said. There are different kinds of people in the military. Some are careerists, some are clerks, some are just casual. The casual ones serve in order to retire early. Some are really seldophones who have read nothing but the statutes. Vacation time flew by quickly. But what a vacation it was, love, tenderness, emotions. And here we are again. Isabella kisses her husband as she sees him off to the service. Isabella, as soon as I'm settled in, I'll call you right away, and if I can, I'll come and pick you up myself. Moreover, the commander promised that as soon as I return from vacation, I'll get the keys to the house right away. Don't miss me, love. We'll see each other soon. Back on duty, Lucas reported, as a military officer should, that senior Lieutenant Romanov had arrived from his regular leave. The commander of the unit took the report and said, Romanov, go see the chief of staff. In the office, the chief of staff handed Lucas the coveted keys. Lucas immediately asked the chief of staff for permission to go into town to do some shopping. Go ahead, the major said smiling. Or you'll bring your wife to an empty house. And you can take the truck, I'll give you orders. It was 40 kilometers to the city. On the way, Lucas wondered what to buy. I wanted to buy everything at once. In a large furniture supermarket, I chose a large double bed, a kitchen set with a corner sofa and a table. Six chairs, and two bedside tables. At the cookware store, purchased a service for 12 persons, spoons, forks. Satisfied with his purchases, returned to the garrison. Hello, Isabella. You're welcome to come over. We have a lovely house, with a big porch and a little garden. Lucas said in a loving voice. Okay, I'll be there. I'll take some time off work, write a letter of resignation, and I'll come right over. Okay, I'll wait for you. In a double compartment, Isabella had a neighbor who was annoying and annoying. Young, maybe 20 years old, and obviously not poor. They got to know each other. The neighbor's name was Kirill. All the way there, Kirill tried to get Isabella into the restaurant, flashing a tightly stuffed purse. Isabella flatly refused. Kirill went alone. An hour later, he returned with a bottle of cognac, a bottle of martini, a large box of chocolates, and a bouquet of roses. It's not clear where he got the flowers on the train. When he got into the compartment, he immediately started pestering Isabella. And I got you some flowers, pretty girl, I can see that you miss me. Fueled by alcohol, he said. Don't be shy, take it. Thank you, of course, but I have someone to give flowers to. Said Isabella. And I don't think he's going to like it. What makes you think I'm bored? Oh, quit breaking down, pretty lady. Let's have a drink, I brought you some wine. In a drunken voice Kirill broadcast. All of you don't touch it first. And anyway, do you know who I am? Do you know who my husband is? Said Isabella. And who is our hubby? With a yajika in his voice, Kirill asked. Company commander, Marine Corps. And he doesn't care who you are. He'll just rip your head off. The boy thought for a moment. Come on, beautiful. You can't take a joke. But it didn't end there. During the night, the milkman tried to get into Isabella's bed. In anger, Isabella kicked him so hard that he flew a meter away from her bed. You just won't let it go. Do you think I wanted to scare you by telling you who my husband is? When you get to Mormonsk, you better not get out of the car. Otherwise, if I tell my husband, you will not only talk in a falsetto, but also become a cripple. Come on, beautiful, don't yell. I mistook the place drunkenly, it happens to no one. Climbing into his bed, Kirill muttered. From that moment on, the compartment became silent. 
All the more so because Kirill had found a drinking buddy in the carriage and went into the compartment only three to four times during the rest of the journey. At 12 o'clock exactly the train arrived in Mormonsk. Kirill was not in the compartment, although his luggage was in place. Isabella picked up her travel bag and her belongings and walked down to the platform. Lucas was waiting for her, in his military uniform. He ran up, lifted Isabella into his arms, and they kissed tenderly. I've been waiting for you so long, Lucas whispered to Isabella, snuggling against her. And here I am. Isabella said happily. Then she turned to the carriage and looked for Kirill. She looked, and she couldn't find him. What's wrong with you? asked Lucas. Just a slight misunderstanding, nothing to worry about. It's just that the neighbor got a young goofball. Isabella smiled. He thinks he's something else. And I told him in color what you could do to him. Did it work? Lucas asked. You bet I did. What did you threaten him with? I told him who you were and that you could rip his asshole off. And that's for the best. Isabella laughed. Did he, what, molest you? Lucas tensed. No, just drunk, talking nonsense, and then fell asleep. Isabella was afraid. What if her husband looked for Kirill? And if he did, then there would be trouble for sure. Forget Lucas. I'm so tired and... D miss you, let's go home. I really want to see where we will live, eat, sleep, and make love. Okay, honey, let's go. Lucas smiled. Isabella rested her cheek against her husband's big shoulder, and they moved toward the parking lot. As they drove, Isabella recounted the latest news. Can you believe it, Lucas? The general won't let me go. He says, Isabella, you're our best employee. Careful, efficient, attentive, and you're the face of our company. We decided to order an advertisement for a big banner with your face on it. Lucas smiled. So now all of Moscow will know what a beautiful wife Senior Lieutenant Romanov has. So they talked their way to the military camp. As Isabella and Lucas were getting into the car, Kirill got out of the car. Yeah, well, the officer is a really big guy. He could break a man like that in half, it would be like two fingers to the pavement. Kirill mused aloud about Lucas's build. When he reached the house, Lucas opened the door proudly for Isabella. Then he unclipped one of the keys from the keychain and handed it to Isabella. This is your home now, too, Violin mumbled. They kissed. Isabella liked the house very much. Small, cozy, with a veranda. Of course, there is still a lot to do inside, but there is a roof over her head. I'm sorry, my love, I didn't have time to buy everything, just the essentials. I even hung the curtain rods, but I didn't buy curtains and drapes. I suggest that on my day off we go to the city and choose. Do you mind? We can go to the movies and the cafe. Lucas suggested it. Sure, honey. With you, anywhere, even to the end of the world. Isabella replied happily and smiled her radiant smile. For that smile, Lucas would have given everything he had. Early in the morning, Lucas left for work. Isabella got up, washed her face, ate breakfast, poured herself some coffee, and went out onto the veranda. In the neighboring yard, she saw a man in his forties painting the fence separating their territories. Good morning, neighbors. Isabella said hello. Good morning, the neighbor said. Are you Lucas' wife? Yes, I'm his wife, and my name is Isabella. Well, it's a pleasure, Isabella. And I'm Lucas' co-worker, and my name is Aristarchus. Introduced himself, smiling at his neighbor. That's an amazing and rare name you have. Said Isabella. Isabella looked at her new acquaintance. Tall, handsome, and as big as Lucas. Yeah, rare. My father wanted to name me Alexander, after Alexander the Great. My father is a historian and my mother is a linguist. And it was my mom who insisted on Aristarchus. They even almost fought when they were choosing a name for me. Smiling, Aristarchus said. In the end, my father gave in. And now I've been Aristarchus for 38 years. 
Would you like some coffee? Isabella asked. I wouldn't say no. Especially since coffee is offered by such a beautiful girl like you. Aristarchus said, smiling. Isabella went back into the house, poured a cup of fragrant, freshly brewed coffee, and went out into the yard. They chatted sweetly while they drank their coffee. Isabella spent the whole day at home alone, tidying up, cooking, figuring out in her mind what else to buy to make the house finally cozy. Lucas didn't return until the evening. Isabella quickly set the table. For dinner, she made pork chops, mashed potatoes, and green peas on a lettuce leaf. Lucas munched on both cheeks, praising his wife for the delicious dinner. That weekend, instead of going to the store, Lucas took his wife to the countryside. They had planned the trip with his co-workers in advance, something he had completely forgotten about. Lucas wanted to relax with his wife and further strengthen their family bond. Plus, he wanted Isabella to meet some of his fellow soldiers and their families. Those who were not busy on duty came. It was autumn, and the leaves were fall-colored, but it was warm and sunny. Lucas introduced his co-workers to Isabella, and they introduced their wives. Their neighbor, Aristarch, was also in the company, along with his wife. The men were fiddling with shish kebab, setting up a collapsible table and chairs. The ladies opened wine, talked, laughed and ate fruit. They became fast friends. The vacation in the open air was a great success. They drank wine, ate kebabs, and even danced. It was good and fun. And the next morning, Lucas was urgently summoned to the unit headquarters. When Lucas came back, he said. Sweetheart, I'm sorry. I'll have to leave you alone, service. I'm leaving on an urgent business trip. I'll be back in about a month, maybe sooner, as it works out. Isabella sobbed softly. How will I be here alone without you? You won't be alone, my dear. It would be really sad to go visit new friends. You can also go home to see your old friends and parents. Please don't be too sad, or it will be hard for me to leave. And I'm leaving right now. I just need to get a second set of uniforms, a change of underwear, and toiletries. Isabella cried quietly. Don't cry, darling, everything will be alright, and I'll be back soon. I'll call you as soon as I get there. Lucas started packing. Isabella did not help him. She didn't want her husband to go away for a month. When Lucas left, Isabella mourned for a couple of days and started to get ready for the road, deciding to visit relatives and old acquaintances. Some distraction from being alone in the house. It's been three years. It was 2006. Lucas was about to be promoted and assigned to a new position. Recently, lying in bed, they'd made a deal. As soon as Lucas was promoted, they would have a baby. They agreed, and they were as happy as children. A month later, Lucas was promoted, but only in rank. But the new position Lucas had been promised was given to someone else. Lucas was still company commander. I'm sorry, Lucas. I was writing a proposal to promote you to deputy battalion commander for technical services. But, apparently, the higher command decided otherwise. As if justifying himself, the commander said. But nothing, next year, Captain Tykomarov, third rank, will be discharged by seniority. It'll free up the deputy rear guard position. I think we'll be okay this time. In the meantime, Lieutenant Commander, you have a new assignment. You know very well the situation in the Gulf of Ada area. Select six sailors and one midshipman at your discretion. You'll be in charge of the group. You have been assigned the task of escorting our dry cargo ship to protect it from Somali bandits. Tomorrow morning with a group you will leave by military transport plane to use Nosokolinsk. From there, a helicopter to board the dry cargo ship. You will receive the rest of your instructions on site upon arrival and use Nosokolinsk. Weapons and ammunition will also be received on the spot. Armored vests and helmets will be received here from the intendant. Yes, comrade captain of the second rank. Lucas trumped. That's it, Romanov, go home and get ready. And keep your eyes open. And if you do, don't take any unnecessary risks or heroics. All right, go.
The commander shook Lucas's hand firmly and gave him a friendly clap on the shoulder. Isabella was crying quietly. Lucas, how many times can you do this? Don't you have any other officers in your unit? Why you? I'm tired of your long business trips. Tired of waiting and afraid. Isabella, my darling, understand. This is my job. I'm a military man and I can't refuse or tell them to send someone else instead of me. And how can you imagine me telling the commander that I can't fulfill this order, send someone else instead of me? What's the big deal? Isabella raised her voice. Let them send an unmarried man. Maybe you don't care about your family anymore. We wanted to have a baby. Apparently you don't want the baby either. I'm tired of being alone all the time. Isabella began to cry in her voice. Isabella, honey, I'll be right back. I'm only there and back. Lucas tried to reassure his wife. Suddenly, Isabella stopped crying abruptly. How much this time? She asked, looking at Lucas with tearful eyes. Lucas blanched. How much? Already angry, Isabella asked. About three and a half, four months. What? Four months? You're leaving me for four months? Isabella paced the room nervously. What do you suggest I do for four months? Visit new girlfriends whose husbands come home every night. And those whose husbands are like you, long-distance travelers, I'm not going to go near them. I'll be like a psycho on edge, and I'll have to listen to their nagging. No, 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 no. Isabella, my sunshine. Lucas tried to calm Isabella down. Don't call me that. I see what a sunshine I am to you. In the four years we've been together, you've been home for half of them. Isabella became even more angry. Why don't you say anything? You have nothing to say. So start telling me about an officer's wife's lot in life. Honey, go home, see your old friends, get some rest, check on your relatives. My bad, Lucas said. When are you leaving, Lucas? Tomorrow at 7 o'clock, 30 minutes, plane. That's fine. You'll leave tomorrow, and I'll leave tonight. I think the train's at 9 p.m. sharp. Isabella threw himself into packing. Take me to town. She said. Why not the train station? I'll walk you. No, I'll take a cab to the station. You have to pack your own bags. Isabella cut me off. Or you might oversleep on your flight. The wife added with a snicker. Isabella, don't start. It hurts me so much to hear you say those words, and in that tone of voice. I don't deserve them. And I don't deserve to live alone, with my husband alive. Isabella cried again. Lucas put his wife on the train. For the first time, his wife didn't hug and kiss Lucas, but kissed him like a friend on the cheek. I'll call you every day. Lucas said goodbye. Don't bother, Isabella replied. You'll have to do the cervic. E, discipline, and whatever else. And you can't technically call every day, because it's happened more than once. Lucas returned home, depressed. That same evening, Isabella left for her parents' house. In the early morning, Lucas left on a business trip. Isabella woke up to the smell of fresh pancakes her mother was making. Sweetly stretching, Isabella got up and went to wash her face, tossing on the way, towards the kitchen. Good morning, mommy. Good morning, my daughter. Her mother called back. Isabella wandered around the city for half a day, then decided to call an old friend. Kate, hi. She spoke excitedly into the phone. How are you? I missed you so much. I'll see you around. They arranged to meet the next day, which was Saturday. Kate and Isabella, they met. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, how long has it been since we've seen each other? Kate asked. Probably over a year. A year and two months to be exact. Said Isabella. Let's go to a cafe and talk, I'm terribly curious about your life and news. Kate said curiously. 
Quickly finding a small but cozy cafe, the girls settled down at a table, ordered tea and pastries. Kate, aren't you married yet? Oh, Isabella, don't rub it in. Men are getting a little thin these days, there's no one to choose from. There is one man. But he's married, but he's generous. You're settling in nicely. Husband to love, house full of money. Like Lucas, by the way. It's not all rosy. Isabella replied sadly. Lucas is always away on business, and I'm home alone. Imagine, out of the four years I've been married, I've seen my husband for a total of less than two years. Kate rounded her eyes. It's like the world he's always traveling to. He won't tell me. He says he's not authorized to divulge military secrets. And now he's gone for four months. I was tired of his business trips. Recently, he was promoted, and I thought that if he was promoted, he would be given a new position. I thought that with the new position, there would be fewer business trips. They didn't promote me, they sent someone else from the outside. Yes, it's hard, Isabella. Kate put on a sympathetic face. Why was he sent? Kate, darling. I feel like he's asking for it. And I'm home alone in four walls. I'm worried, crying, what if something happens to him? Who would want him crippled then? I've told him about it many times, even offered to quit the service, but he won't do it. Of course, his business trips pay well, but it doesn't make me feel any better. And with new friends how? Asked Eugenia. No way. In her heart, Isabella said. Sitting at home, waiting for their own, like me. Nothing to talk about. There's nowhere to go at the base. If you want to have fun, go 40 kilometers away. You can't go in your own car, so what fun it would be. And to go there and back again, at the checkpoints alone, you lose a lot of time, there are checkpoints everywhere, very strict. We have to jolt around in a military bus. The last one leaves the city at 10 p.m. sharp. If you're late, that's it. A cab will stop you at the first checkpoint, and they won't let you go any further. You'll have to hitchhike. Military cars won't take them, they have orders not to take passengers. So you'll be walking until some officer or midshipman in his car, returning from the city, picks you up. Yeah, that's a depressing story. Not fun, Kate said. What's not fun about having fun on the side? What are you, Kate? I'm married. So what? What's it like to be alone for months on end? I mean, I can't do that. I have sex two or three times a week, I can't do that. No, Kate, I can't. Isabella said. She said, and didn't realize she was blushing. It didn't escape her friend that Isabella was embarrassed. Come on, Isabella. Kate smiled. There are plenty of handsome men on your base, aren't there? Of course there are. Isabella replied, embarrassed and blushing again. We have a neighbor, Captain Aristarchus, third rank. A very handsome and imposing man. I like him, very much. But he is married and a faithful husband. Aristarchus? My friend asked excitedly. That's a cool name, I like it already. And there are plenty of Aristarchs like that. Plenty. The base is full of them. Said Isabella. Interesting. And what, you don't look at anyone? Kate asked slyly. Oh, come on. In a neighboring unit, an officer's wife hooked up with a messenger. They got caught. A week later, the whole base knew. It's embarrassing. What are you talking about? You can't do one or the other. And leaving your wife for a long time is okay? I don't understand that kind of life. Kate resented it. Jen, you're the one who wanted to go out with Lucas. You brought him to the party where we met. I remember. Kate puffed out her cheeks and let the air out of her mouth. He wasn't my type, and I'd come with him because I liked him as a man, nothing more. I only needed him for carnal pleasures. Kate smiled. You know Lucas's figure, a mountain of muscle. But I didn't get to know his size, because he'd fallen for you right away. 
Isabella blushed again. But all right, it was a size without him that night. Kate continued with a smile. Remember, there was another one. As tall as Lucas. Nikita. I remember. Isabella said. That's how I left with Nikita. He had his sights set on you, too. I cooled him off. I told him, don't you see, the girl's busy. And he said, how are you? Are you free? And that's it, he never left my side again. No, he looked in your direction. And I didn't notice anyone else but Lucas that night. As soon as you introduced me to him, he had me all to himself. I didn't even notice when you left or who you were with. Kate wrinkled her face. What do you see in your soldier, then? They're all limited. You can only use them in war or in bed. Their minds are the same everywhere, in their heads as in their heads. Kate laughed out loud. Don't say that. Isabella said sternly. Lucas is very intelligent and well-read. He's interested in art. He even tried writing poetry, but he wasn't very good at it, so he gave it up. Girlfriend. Kate stared at Isabella point-blank. I can't watch you sour. You're just dying with Lucas. It's like living in a concentration camp behind barbed wire. No fun, no love life, and no kids. We want to, and we've already talked about having a baby with Lucas. But then he had a business emergency. All right, here's the deal. I'm not gonna let you die of boredom. I'll start saving you today. What do you mean? Isabella looked at Kate in surprise. I mean that tonight we're going to a nightclub with a bar. And no refusals, no questions asked. I know a place near here. I know a guy who works there as a receptionist. Isabella hadn't had such an easy, fun time in a long time. She was happy and relaxed. Apparently the couple of specialty cocktails she'd had helped her relax. She danced and slowly sipped a third. Her head was slightly buzzing from the drink, and Isabella was like in bliss. Obana, that's the girl. Isabella heard a man's voice behind her. Isabella turned around, a pleasant young man was looking at her. It had been a long time since I'd seen such a stunning beauty in this establishment. Isabella blushed. She was very pleased to hear words of admiration from a strange man. I'd have been tumbling and tumbling with her for weeks, with a break for lunch. The guy went on. And the tumbler, it won't break. Isabella asked her snidely. Well, let's go to my place and see what the question is. He had the nerve to say it. I'm married, actually. Isabella said, and showed her finger where the ring glittered. So what about the husband? The husband will still have time to catch up. Especially if he's not a wall, he'll move over. Strangely, Isabella was somehow not offended by the young man's insolence, but even amused. She smiled at him. You're ready for an adventure, my youngest friend. He said even more brazenly. Maybe you should at least ask me my name first. Isabella asked. Do we have to? We'll have a fling and then we'll be off, that's all. The less you know, the better you sleep. The boy smiled. Oh, come on, married. It wouldn't hurt your husband if we fucked up a couple or three times. Make up your mind, or I'll leave. He said. My name is Isabella, what's yours? Isabella extended her hand to the guy. My name is Alec. Any other questions and wishes? Alec shook hands with the girl. Some drunken guy intervened in their conversation. Hey, friend, let's go for a drive. He mumbled in a slurred tongue. Are you out of your depth, man? Can't you see, the chick's already taken. Alex pissed off. Or maybe you need to hit the enemy compartment, for full understanding? The drunken man tried to grab Alec by the breasts, but failed. Alec knocked the guy to the dance floor with a quick and accurate punch to the jaw. Not knowing why, but Isabella felt wild pleasure from Alec's insolence, his lewd words and suggestions, from the fight in the drink. Well, how long are you going to think? Let's go, 
I'll make you such a night, you won't regret it. No, Alec, I can't right now. I have a friend here. Isabella started to refuse. Let's take a friend too, I don't mind. Alec smiled again. No, I won't go. And I'm married. I already told you. I told you about your husband. Husband, he ate too many pears. Again smiling with 32 teeth, Alec said. Don't be afraid, princess, I won't hurt you. And I'm not afraid. Just, I can't. Alec grabbed Isabella by the waist. At least let me kiss her. He said, and kissed Isabella's lips. Isabella was confused, and for the first few moments did not resist. Then she fought back. Finally Alec let her go. What a jerk. Isabella called Alec a jerk, and, wiping her lips, began to swivel her head, looking for Kate. Lucas woke up in the medical cubicle. The last thing he remembered was a hard jolt to his right shoulder, then pain and darkness. Are you awake, comrade lieutenant commander? There was a voice from the next bunk. The Voic. E was familiar. Lucas tried to turn his head toward the voice. At the same instant, a sharp pain pierced his shoulder. Lucas gritted his teeth. Kondratyev, is that you? Moving his parched lips, Lucas said. Yes, it's me, comrade captain lieutenant. Don't talk and don't move, I'll come to you myself. I've been slightly wounded in the arm. It's nothing. The bullet ricocheted and got stuck in my hand. And yours, comrade lieutenant captain, went through on departure. It hit a place unprotected by body armor. It went through the scapula, slanted, and got caught in the back of the vest. It took your surgeon four hours to operate. Said he was removing small bone fragments. Your scapula cracked, so he put some braces on it. Kondratiev came to the bed. No one else is hurt. Murdered, no? Lucas asked excitedly. No, comrade captain lieutenant, not at all, only two of us were hurt. And the pirates what? Asked Lucas. Don't stand still, tell me in your own words. So they ran away, comrade captain lieutenant. Relaxed, the sailor continued. And we sank two boats. Six or seven men were killed. And Ensign Barsky took one prisoner. Joyfully reported Kondratiev. Thanks for the story, said Lucas. Thank you, and for the service a lot. Glad to try, comrade captain. Repeated the sailor. Listen, Kondratiev. You get me a doctor in some of the brass. Oh, well, a doctor will be fine. Three days later, Isabella was back at the nightclub. This time, she came here, alone. Kate couldn't go with her, she had some pressing business to attend to. Isabella sat down at the counter, ordered a specialty cocktail, and sipped it quietly. She was bored. She glanced occasionally at the visitors. Why did I come here, and alone? Isabella thought as she continued to look around at the visitors. Suddenly Isabella caught herself thinking that she was looking for Alec. After that visit, Alec had been on her mind. Remembering his brazenness and recklessness, the dashing daring with which he'd hit a drunken guy. It all combined to turn Isabella on. Yesterday, she even caught herself fantasizing about sexual themes with Alec as her partner. And the strangest thing was that she didn't even try to banish these fantasies from her head, on the contrary, she continued to fantasize further. Isabella went to the nightclub for the fourth day in a row, hoping to meet Alec. And why didn't I ask him for his phone number, or didn't give him mine? Isabella thought. So what if we just had fun at the club, not alone? I wasn't going to see him anyway, and I was bored, Kate was at work or busy with something. My classmates, too, just a coffee in a cafe. I already know who I'd become. And with Alec fun and not afraid, it is immediately obvious that in case of help, we'll cheer up and will not give offense. Hello, princess. Isabella heard Alec's voice behind her. As soon as Lucas was taken to the county hospital, he immediately began calling Isabella. Isabella didn't pick up. I'll call you back later. 
Lucas thought and closed his eyes tiredly. Alex stepped into the shower, where Isabella stood under the jets of water. Wow! Alec exclaimed. And God has not spoiled you. Alec stood next to Isabella. Turning the girl to face him, he reached his lips to hers. They shared a lingering kiss. What are you grumbling about? Didn't you like it? Isabella asked in surprise. Did I do something wrong? No, princess, it was amazing. I loved it with you, you're hot. How was it for you with me? You know, unusual, and yeah, I really liked it. Isabella replied. It's just that I've never had it. And my husband has never pinched me or bitten me. Here we go again. Alec made a grimace. Princess, while you are with me, forget about your husband. By the way, he called you, like, five or six times when you were in the shower. I went into the shower room to tell you that, but I couldn't resist when I saw your inviting ass. You fool, you should have told me before you came on to me. Isabella was indignant. Your husband won't lose it, he'll call back again. Alex smiled. Who's your husband, by the way? I hope he's not the boss of some cops, or worse, a deputy. He asked. No. My husband is a civil engineer. Isabella lied. Oh, I see. A techie, then. What and where is he building now? Alec asked. Isabella frantically thought about what to say. And then she remembered how, the other day, the news had talked about the construction of a hotel, I think in Tomboff. Or Penza. Whatever. The girl thought. You'd think Alec would check. He's in Tomboff, building a hotel. Tomboff, the city of Klebny. Making a clever face, Alec said. The girl picked up the phone, there were 11 missed calls. Isabella started dialing her husband. Hello, my love. How are you? I missed you so much. Why did it take you so long to call? Alec wrinkled his nose. Why didn't you pick up the phone? I went to the store, my mom asked me to buy groceries, and I forgot my phone at home. Are you at your parents' house? Yes, I'm at my mom's. I couldn't stay home alone, so I went to my mom's. When are you coming back? What's taking so long? I'm going crazy without you. How's mom? She's fine. Lucas, you don't sound right. It's like you're after your march, tired. Are you really okay? I'm fine, but I just miss you so much. Isabella sobbed into the phone. Okay, my love, I won't cry. I love you, too, and kiss you tenderly. Come back soon, I'm waiting for you. Isabella disconnected the connection, took a deep breath, and exhaled sharply. Only then did she notice that while she was on the phone with Lucas, the towel from her body had fallen to the floor. Alec looked at her with a predatory gaze. Calf tenderness. And he saw. You should be on stage, you'd make a good actress. If someone told me that over the phone, I'd believe it, too. Stop it. I do love my husband very much. Isabella declared in an unquestioning tone. Of course you do, what a question. Alec looked seriously at Isabel. When you go home, don't forget to buy some polishing paste for your husband as a present. The man laughed. Let him polish his horns. Alec said through his laughter. What a bastard you are. Isabella looked angrily at Alec. I'm leaving. She said. Where are you going princess in the night? Go, I'm not taking you, I've been drinking. And the last bus leaves, Alec glanced at the clock hanging over the fireplace. In an hour. From our cottage village, to the bus stop, four kilometers. And I want to warn you, it's not a given that there will be a bus. It happens a lot. Then I'll hitchhike, the girl said. Come on, princess. We're having a good time, don't break the buzz. Let's have a glass of bubbly, shall we? Let's cool off, shall we? Come on, princess. Don't be mad. It was a joke. 
Isabella didn't take offense, she just acted angry. She liked Alec's boorish behavior in talk. Isabella sat down on the edge of the bed. I don't get it, you're offering champagne and you're falling apart, so bring it over. The cork flew into the ceiling with a loud pop. Alec poured the frothy, amber liquid into flutes. Here's to you, princess. You're gorgeous. Looking Isabella in the eyes, Alec said, raising his flute. They drank. And now, princess, do me a favor. Alec fell back on the bed and closed his eyes. A little time passed. Isabella meets Lucas on the platform. They rushed toward each other. Isabella hung around her husband's neck, and they shared a long kiss. Isabella cried, Lucas soothed her. Come on, sweetheart. I'm back, it's all right. I'm with you. I took your car. You drive it back. Half a month after Lucas's return, they were in bed, getting ready for bed. Isabella's phone rang. Isabella picked up the phone, got out of bed, and went to the bathroom. Two or three minutes later, she came back. Who called? My husband asked. Mom called. Isabella answered. She's fine. Lucas asked with a slight worry in his voice. No, she's just sick, asking to come over. Sure, go ahead. My husband said. Maybe I should come with you, maybe she needs some help. I'll take three or four days off. No, Lucas, I can handle it. Especially since you're about to be reassigned. Right now, you should be in front of your superiors more often. And if you need anything, I'll call you. Isabella lied. It wasn't my mom calling. It's been a week. I haven't heard from Isabella. Lucas couldn't find a place to be. Isabella's mother didn't answer either, the number was unavailable, and neither was his wife's phone. It was only on the third day that Lucas managed to call his mother-in-law. Hello, Lydia Nikolaevna. Lucas said hello. How's your health? Hello, Lucas. Thank you, I'm fine. When are you and Isabella coming to see me? Isn't Isabella at your place? Lucas asked in amazement. No. The last time she called me was when you got back from your business trip. Didn't you call her a week ago? Lucas asked, even more surprised and worried. No, she hadn't. Lydia Nikolaevna replied with concern. What's wrong, Lucas? Lydia Nikolaevna, I'm leaving, wait for me, I'll be at your place in 24 hours. When I arrive, we'll talk there. Lucas jumped out of the house and, as he was in uniform without changing, jumped into the car. From the pill Lucas had taken. Isabella felt good and happy, the occasional bright multicolored glare flashing in her eyes. Relaxation and waves of bliss rolled over her body. Lucas's caresses only increased the bliss. During sex, Isabella almost blacked out several times from the sensation that washed over her. She fell into a half-asleep, then came back to her senses. How long it lasted, Isabella didn't remember. She kept taking those pills Lucas had slipped her. It seemed as if the day never ended. She didn't even remember if she was asleep or not. She saw more men and women in bed, having intercourse, and Isabella thought it was all a beautiful dream. She was ripped out of reality. Isabella woke up in a hospital room, under and four. Her husband was asleep. Next to the hospital bed where she lay, sitting in a chair. Isabella was shivering violently, her joints twisting, her whole body aching, her head splitting, cold sweat dripping down her face. Isabella couldn't understand or remember how she'd gotten here, where Lucas was, or where Lucas had come from. Her mother entered the room crying. When she saw that her daughter had come to her senses, she smiled at first and then cried again. The mother wept and lamented. What have you done, my daughter? You have ruined everything. Thank God you have such a husband, if it wasn't for him, whether you and I would have seen each other in this world or not, I don't know. Lucas woke up. He looked at Isabella in silence. His gaze expressed unbearable pain and longing, love and hate. He did not say a word to Isabella. 
Lydia Nikolaevna, your daughter has regained consciousness, she is not well, I will go and get a doctor. Do you need anything? No, Lucas, thank you. Lydia Nikolaevna said, go, Lucas. You should rest like a human being, you haven't slept for the third day already. All right, Lydia Nikolaevna. Lucas went out. He came back in the afternoon, looked into the room. Lydia Nikolaevna, can I talk to you for a moment? He asked. My mother-in-law came out. Lydia Nikolaevna, I've been to the police and told them everything, they'll come for me soon. So, I wanted to apologize if I've offended you in any way, by word or deed. God be with you, Lucas. You have nothing to apologize for. I owe it to my daughter. Sorry to interrupt you, Lydia Nikolaevna. At home on the base, I have money. Get the keys from Isabella and go get them. I don't think it'll be too hard to get a pass. Take the money and get your daughter into a clinic for drug addicts. If you don't have enough money, sell my car, I'll write a power of attorney for you. Whatever you need, take it and sell the rest. Use the proceeds to treat your daughter. Now go to her. I don't want you to see me arrested. And don't say anything to Isabella yet. A year and a half had passed. Isabella sat in the visiting room. Lucas was brought in. You have four hours. The guard warned me. Hello, Lucas. Isabella said hello. Her ex-husband was silent. He stared at her blankly, one might say even through her. You don't want to say hello to me? Well, I understand. Isabella swallowed the lump in her throat. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I realized too late what I'd done. Believe me, I didn't mean to hurt you, I love and will only love you. I don't need anyone else. I'll wait for you as long as it takes. Why, why did you do it? You ruined your life, your career. Isabella wailed, crying. Convoy. Lucas shouted. An escort came in. Take me away. I consider this date over. He said. But it's only been a short time. Said the escort. Lucas turned to Isabella. No, I'm not the one who ruined my life and career, betrayed my love, and trampled on my future. It was you, Isabella. It was your actions and deeds that destroyed everything, tearing it down to the ground. I still love you no matter what. But don't wait for me, I'm in the military. I won't forgive betrayal, and I'll never come back to you. Isabella was crying her eyes out. Lucas was taken away. When Isabella had tests at the clinic, it turned out that she was pregnant. After finding out the due date and calculating the time, it turned out that Alec was the father of the child. Isabella had an abortion. In her polocati then, doctors refused to perform an abortion, as there was a high probability that a woman could remain infertile. Isabella didn't want to give birth. Maybe the pills Alec was giving her could affect the fetus. That's what the same doctors told her. Unfortunately, they were right about everything. Isabella lost both the fetus and her ability to procreate. Lucas arrived at Alec's house and started banging on the door. They opened the door for him. Lucas burst into the cottage. Where's my wife? Isabella. He called to his wife. The door opened in one of the rooms, and Alec stood on the threshold in his robe. What do you want, soldier? He said brazenly. Lucas moved toward him. Let me into the room, or I'll blow your head off. Lucas gritted his teeth menacingly. Are you taking a little on yourself, soldier boy? He replied with a cocky grin. Lucas didn't say any more, he deftly shoved Alec out of the way and entered the room. What he saw shocked him at first, and then rage hit him. When he saw his wife naked and in an inadequate state, he lost control of himself. Alec's accomplice was the first to fall. Then Alec himself. The third was a bodyguard. He stood in the passage of the street door. He had a long knife in one hand and a stun gun in the other. It took Lucas less than 30 seconds to disarm him and send him into a deep knockout with one punch. 
He took Isabella out first, wrapping a sheet around her. Isabella fought back and screamed that he was scum and how much she hated him. Hates him because he's a worthless man she can't stand. For him to get out and leave her alone. Lucas carried her to her mother, who sat in the backseat of his car. Lydia Nikolaevna pressed her daughter against herself, cried and comforted her daughter. And Lucas went back to the house to get the girls. During the interrogations, Lucas learned that Alec was a major drug dealer and was in development. He also sold girls to underground brothels in Turkey, the Arab Emirates and several European countries. During the release of his wife and two captives, he killed two people. Alec and his assistant. Lucas was sentenced to four years. Isabella's friend Kate got married and stopped all communication with her. Isabella has become withdrawn and lives with her mother. She works in a call center for the DHS. She never found out that Lucas had been wounded on his last deployment. Lucas, concerned about Isabella's health, did not want to, himself, and asked the command not to inform his wife, so that she would not worry and be nervous, because they wanted a child. Isabella, immersed in her love, did not even notice the fresh scars on her husband's body. Somali pirates used to terrorize the entire Northwest Indian Ocean. Until they were put to an end in 2011.